right now on Five on Your Side at 10. Dragged by a car in the grove and left more than scarred. Upon impact, he um, shattered my left femur into six plus pieces, and that's a very tough bone to break. Two months later, we hear from the 23 year old and what she sees for her future. Tow truck trouble. The man caught in the act while trying to swipe South City cars from people's yards. Solidarity and resistance captured on canvas. We had no idea that the response would be so overwhelming. How artists responded to the death of Michael Brown Jr. from the streets of Ferguson and beyond. But first. Drenching rain is moving away from St. Louis this evening. Why you can rest easy overnight and why Sunday is another weather first weather alert day. And we're in weather alert tonight and looking at a storm system that could make its way to the region. Here is a look at that system earlier today. Just a few states over tornadoes across Nebraska could lead to severe weather here. Look at that video. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kelly Jackson. The by state is still seeing some heavy rainfall and there may, may be more storms coming Sunday. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell is here with a look at our weather first forecast. You know, it has really been a very rough day weather wise for areas to our west and northwest. All things considered, it's been pretty quiet around here, but you go up into Omaha and up to Des Moines and it has been a rough afternoon and a very rough evening for the folks up there. We've had the rain, yes, and still coming down for some of us right now, but the main area of rain is pushing away from St. Louis, at least for this route, sliding to the north and east. Looking to the north and west, there are the lines of thunderstorms that worked out of Nebraska, now into Iowa, even in the Des Moines metro area. A tornado touching down within the last hour or so. These are all the reports of tornadoes and winds up in these areas across Iowa and into eastern portions of Nebraska. Some pretty impressive tornado damage coming out of Omaha, which is very sad to see. Fortunately, uh, it doesn't seem like there's been a lot of injury reports that we've heard so far, which is good news, but boy, rough for those folks there. Our rain has been drenching this evening in St. Louis with rumbles of thunder, but nothing really severe. Rainfall amounts, yeah, just in the last hour or two, many of us have picked up close to an inch of rainfall. Lambert coming in with about seven tenths of an inch. So this rain is diminishing right now. As we go into tomorrow, maybe a spot shower or a thunderstorm, but the strong storm chances won't return. It doesn't look like on any kind of widespread basis until Saturday. Make that Sunday evening. We will talk more about that in a few minutes, Kelly. All right, Scott, and stay up to date on the latest weather from five in your side on our website or the five plus streaming app, or you can also text the word weather to 314-425-5355 and we'll send you the link. So my right arm pretty much got rubbed off across the street. It got pulled and pulled the way it got pulled. It meant that my elbow dislocated and I had less than half of my forearm left. I'd severed all the arteries. Tonight, a woman who was dragged underneath a car for several blocks in the Grove neighborhood speaks on camera for the first time today since that day in February. Ellie Bentley talks about that night that changed her life and what happens next? Annie Crawl joins us after sitting down with the 23 year old about the surgeries and the support she still needs. A long road to recovery, Annie. Kelly, absolutely. As you partially heard, Ellie Pentley broke both of her legs after getting hit by a car on February 25th and then dragged underneath it for about three blocks near the Platypus Bar. Originally from Bingham in the UK, she moved to St. Louis to be with her now ex-boyfriend, City SC soccer player Indiana Vasilev. It's a relationship and an evening that Ellie can't forget. On February 25th, the shooting near Manchester Road wouldn't just change the lives of those involved, but of someone hiding from the shots. And one of the bullets went past me, um, so I obviously ran. Ellie Bentley ducking for cover between two cars. The driver never asked me to move out the way. He never ushered to the side or anything. He looks at me and then just completely puts his foot to the gas. Police say that driver was Deontay Taylor. Uh, so I'm sandwiched between the, the floor and the bottom of the car. My hope was initially if I curled tight into a ball as, as flat as I could that perhaps I would fall under the car and I, I hoped and I prayed and unfortunately that didn't happen. After several blocks, Ellie was ejected from the car in front of Platypus Bar. I'm very lucky about that and they call 911 and I'm 
I'm very aware that I'm bleeding out, I can feel it. And I encourage them to lie on me and wait for the ambulances. Once she was in the hospital is when one of her friends, Lauren Coleman, heard what happened. So I was just so upset and um, sorry, it makes me a little bit emotional to talk about, but yeah, I was just so worried for her. Um, but after, sorry, she's a little bit. Through her tears, Lauren is still amazed at how Ellie has bounced back from her life as a physics and math student overseas. When you look at the photos of you and you're at graduation or you're in like these beautiful ball gowns, I'm sure you've probably looked at some of those photos or maybe you've looked at some of the coverage. Does that kind of stir any memories of like, oh my goodness, I would have never thought this is what my life looked like? I look back at where I was then and the trajectory I saw my life traveling in. And obviously somebody tried to take that from me although they, they weren't successful and I guarantee that I'm going to still achieve those same goals and possibly do better. I'm going to be more motivated. Lauren and Ellie planning to stay in St. Louis and move in together despite the accident. I've been amazed by the warmth and just the sense of community that I've felt here and I love St. Louis for that. I love the arts, I love the culture, I love the people. Ellie now facing more than a million dollars in medical bills, her attorney Ben Tobin says, limited to the money he's able to get back for her with the value of Taylor's car insurance. That's not even going to be put a dent in, you know, what what her damages actually are in this case and no amount of money is ever going to make her whole. As Ellie continues to heal, she is planning to have several more surgeries, especially on her right hand and arm that she still doesn't have use of. Surgeries that can last up to 11 hours, she tells me, which may happen over the next two years. If you'd like to help contribute to Ellie's medical expenses, there is a link to a GoFundMe page on our website at KSDK.com. Thank you, Annie. Tonight, a man is arrested after police say he stole cars from a South City neighborhood using a tow truck. It happened in the Dutchtown community on two separate occasions near Grand Boulevard and Learman Avenue. A quick thinking neighbor says it was about to happen again until she confronted him. Brent Solomon picks up the story from here. He had to be stopped. This watchful neighbor asked we not identify her. She was on the lookout after getting word someone stole two cars from her neighborhood this month. She didn't think something was right when she saw this tow truck arriving back to Lemerman Avenue. He had already been here twice. He had been here three days before and stole two cars. Watch as she confronts the man in a tow truck labeled C&J Transport. He told me that he was a city tow. She didn't buy it because she had just been in touch with city police about the last two thefts. That's when she called 911, prompting the driver to take off. Friday, police identified that driver as 47-year-old Wendell Bryant. They got word he would be at the federal courthouse to meet with his probation officer. That's when they showed up there, handcuffed him, and charged him with felony theft and property damage. One of the cars he's accused of stealing was damaged in the process. Belongings are in there. Her baby's walker and her belongings are in there. One of the other cars, she says, belongs to a nearby church. You stole from a peace center that helps thousands of immigrants get their license. I think that's how he makes his living. Brent Solomon, five on your side. Police say Brian admitted to the crimes. Court records show he was on probation after pleading guilty to bank fraud in 2021. New developments today out of the Thomas Kenworthy trial. He is accused of killing St. Louis police officer Tamaris Bohannon and wounding another officer in 2020. The star witness for the defense, a forensic psychologist, was questioned for more than three hours. Dr. Patricia Zaff detailed Kenworthy's childhood abuse at the hands of his parents. She says this kind of abuse led to the mental illness that meets the criteria to find Kenworthy not guilty by reason of mental defect. Prosecutors plan to present a rebuttal witness who disagrees with the assessment. The trial is expected to last until May 3rd, but is running a bit ahead of schedule. A St. Louis County retired judge is finding a new way to help victims of domestic violence. With his expertise, he has created a nonprofit to assist people filing orders of protection. Justina Coronel takes a closer look into this newly formed program. Dedicated to decreasing domestic violence, these two aim to do that. The attorneys are hard at work. 
to give victims and survivors representation and hope. I knew that I wanted to do something that pertained to domestic violence uh, advocacy. St. Louis County retired judge Michael Burton created the nonprofit St. Louis Survivors Legal Support. St. Louis Survivors Legal Support is saving lives. Holly Katz is the director of legal advocacy. So now working at St. Louis Survivors Legal Support where we can intervene much earlier in the cycle of violence and try to help people before the worst happens um, for me is really very empowering. Her new role still fulfills that passion. What St. Louis Survivors Legal Support does is represent victims of intimate partner violence when they are seeking an order from the court that will protect them from their abuser. Burton created this after finding some flaws. I would read in the files some significant allegations and in so many instances the petitioner, the victim that was filing for an order of protection would not appear in court. He learned 80% of cases in St. Louis City and County are dismissed for several reasons, and almost all of the 20% who show up lack an attorney. If someone were in that position to be talking about the most traumatic situation in their life, it's bad enough that the abuser is 10 feet away, but the fact that that abuser has counsel uh, is very intimidating, and many of these folks did not appear. That's where the organization steps in with free representation to uplift the petitioners and properly fill out the paperwork. If someone has support, uh, they're going to be much more likely to appear in court, and that's exactly what we found out. They say it's more than a piece of paper. It can um, grant custody. It can require supervised visitation if the parties have children in common. And it's not just these two doing the heavy lifting. So at this time we have more than 150 volunteer lawyers. The program is carried by support. Support to show victims they're not alone. Orders of protection do work when they're enforced. We've seen people turn their lives around. Justina Cornell, Five on Your Side. The organization also provides free training for the attorneys and volunteers. They also hope to raise funds to hire staff full time. For ways to help or to find resources, visit KSDK.com and go to the As Seen on TV section. Coming up, it mirrors uh, what the artists see in society and indeed in this case, what the artists saw in the streets of Ferguson. An art exhibit chronicling Ferguson 10 years later, how curators are trying to make it more accessible even after it closes. A stay in the hospital isn't keeping them from their magical night. Because I was sick, I missed my first school dance. So this made up for it. I got to have my first dance here. And how teens at St. Louis Children's Hospital got their prom. It's a big weekend with the Greater St. Louis Marathon, prom and graduation season. Sunday is a weather first weather alert day, even though most of us don't have to dodge the drops for much of the weekend. We'll break down what happens this weekend in seven minutes. An art exhibit chronicling the decade since the death of Michael Brown Jr. closed today. Ferguson and Beyond comprised of painting, sculptures, poetry and more focused on the perspectives of artists of color, both local and national since his death. From the streets of Ferguson in 2014 to now, the exhibit tackles heavy subjects like racial and ethical injustice, police brutality and trauma. It is a very hard exhibition to view. As I tell my students, not all art is beautiful. So this particular exhibition is really, as one of our artists described it, is kind of a gut punch. But that is why art is so crucial in our society. Terry Riley also says she is working on gathering funds to make this a touring exhibit and putting it into a digital archive. Today, teens spending prom season in a hospital are getting a chance to live out their special night. Many teenage patients at St. Louis Children's Hospital facing serious illnesses won't be able to attend their own high school proms. So the hospital brought the prom to them. It starts with planning in January, organizing hair and makeup stations, what they'll wear, jewelry and flowers, all provided through donations and all to help them feel like teens and special. 
prom is such a milestone event in their um, their high school experience. And you know, with them being here, maybe in it being prom season, a lot of them are having to miss that um, or unable to go. And so providing that so they can still participate is huge. You know, we've heard a lot of people just so thankful that they get to get dressed up and feel good while um, being here and going through everything. This is the 10th year Children's Hospital has done the teen prom. The second sponsored by the Duncan Joy and Childhood Foundation. Duncan is holding similar prom night events in 12 other cities across the country. Tomorrow is the Greater St. Louis Marathon. It kicks off and that may give some drivers the runaround. Here's what you need to know before your downtown commute. Starting at 7 a.m., runners will take off from the Enterprise Center and head down towards the Arch across the Mississippi River and back. Several ramps to I-64 will be closed between 6 and 11.30 a.m., including ones at Market, Broadway, and Grand. And you can find a link for a full list of road closures in the article on KSDK.com. Earlier, we showed you some of the tornadoes in eastern Nebraska, and here's what they left behind. Residents say even as they took shelter, everything was being thrown around them. Everyone's houses are, are they're gone. They're gone. I don't, I don't know what else to say. I just hope everyone's okay. Kansas City, Omaha, and Tulsa are now bracing for more severe storms tonight. Thankfully, nothing like that here. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell is back with another look at our weather for his forecast. You know, we've seen some pictures tonight, Kelly, that have just been dramatic coming out of parts of Nebraska into Iowa and, and homes where all that's left is, is the floor you know, in, in the basement, and that's it. So the damage assessments ongoing will continue into tomorrow, but it's been out of our area and should stay out of our area as we head into tomorrow. Looking out into St. Charles right now, you still have the wet roads, but the bulk of the rain has lifted off to the north and northeast of St. Louis. You can see how big of a system this is, and really there's two waves. This is just the first wave that we're dealing with. Look down across Arkansas. That was the rain that spread through here this evening. There's still some more farther to the south that stays down that way. Then you see the storm spinning here out of Nebraska into Iowa this evening. Those have been the monster storms that have caused such damage. The impact of this down to our south should remain mainly south of St. Louis. Some of our southeastern counties may get a little rain overnight from that, but it's not favorable for severe weather. The strong storms are ongoing up here in the parts of Iowa, but locally the back edge of the widespread rain that's moving off to the east of St. Louis. There's still a little redevelopment here and there, but the overall flavor of this is taking all of this rain away from us and leaving us with maybe just an isolated shower or thunderstorm, not severe through the overnight hours into early tomorrow morning. What's been out to our west is tracking northeast bound in Edwardsville, still looking at the wet roads this evening. And yes, through the overnight hours, we're not really going to dry out, but there'll be a break from rain for a while. 62 right now, almost an inch of rain today at Lambert after the high of 70. Your low temperatures tonight, upper 50s, low 60s, holding about steady for the overnight hours. So our severe weather threat for tomorrow is mainly again in these same areas. Oklahoma, Kansas, northwest Missouri, up into Iowa. That's where most of the thunderstorms will develop. There's a chance we'll get a couple to pop up here and there, but not much around St. Louis. As you're timing out your day tomorrow, you know, it's one of those days where you may need the umbrella for an hour or two briefly if we pop a shower or a storm, but most of the day is dry. Sunday, we'll have some residual showers early in the morning, but it's later in the afternoon and into the evening Sunday when we'll be watching those shower and thunderstorm chances go up and into the evening hours on Sunday. This is when we would have the potential for a stronger storm or two. That's when our severe weather potential increases just a bit, especially west of St. Louis. So as a consequence, we have a weather alert day for Sunday, but it's for mainly, you know, after dinner time when that chance for showers and thunderstorms will be on the increase for Sunday evening. Tomorrow, much of the day is dry and most of us won't see rain. And Sunday during the day, there's a lot of dry time as well. well that's good. And look at across the board. There's like, it's like something's always going on. There's a lot happening in the next <laughs> 10 days. I can see it in <laughs> yes, your eyes. Yes. <laughs> okay, thanks, Scott. Corey's here with sports. What's going on? Well, the Cardinals unloaded on a couple of baseballs tonight in Queens. Mizzou's new athletic director, 
He knows the power of NIL. And a local star waits to hear his name called in the NFL draft. Stick around. Sports is up next. This Five on Your Side Sports Report is sponsored by Tele Tire and Auto Centers, driving your way since 1942. For me, Cardinals Met series are still special. There's a lot of history there. From the great rivalry against the Pond Scum Mets of the 80s to Wayno's heartbreaking curve on Beltron in 2006, and even Stubby Clapp's recent takedown of Pete Alonso, the series has certainly had its moments. Maybe we'll get another chapter this weekend in Queens. Deprived there is Lady Liberty. Hopefully she's a beacon welcoming in the Cardinals offense into 2024. This is a good start. Alex Burleson obliterates that baseball off Mets starter Jose Budo. 3-0 Cardinals. I think that was a blast. Check this out. Wilson Contreras absolutely destroys this pitch for a 445-foot home run that went screaming out of the park at 114 miles per hour. Yeah, I think Wilson knew he got all that one. That's his fourth of the year. Miles Michael has started. He was pretty good. Michael Siani can sure play center field, huh? Another web gem from him. Michaelis in the bullpen held strong. Helsley shuts it down. And the Cardinals win game one over the Mets, 42. Big day in Columbia. Mizzou introduced its new athletic director, Laird Veach. In this era of college sports, you, you need an AD who knows how to keep the money train rolling in. Here's Veach's outlook when it comes to NIL success. But in my mind, we have to find a way to get back to what NIL was originally intended, which was more of the traditional uh, endorsement or sponsorship directly with student athletes. I believe that is a more sustainable model. So we're going to need major corporations in the state of Missouri and beyond to invest in our student athletes that way. Dreams continue to be realized at the NFL draft with rounds two and three rolling along tonight. Illinois and Mizzou both saw some more dreams come true. Among them, Ennis Rakestraw went 61st overall to Detroit, and Jerzon Newton went 36 overall to D.C. Another Illini star is hoping to hear his name called tomorrow. St. Louis native and Trinity High School grad Isaiah Williams is the fourth leading receiver in fighting Illini history. What makes that even more crazy is that he came to Champaign as a quarterback. Now he's on the cusp of the NFL, but Williams hopes his biggest impact comes in the community. So I want to be that guy that paid away for the young guys. And not only guys from, like guys from St. Louis, but shorter guys from St. Louis. Like we got a lot of talent, guys who are shorter, but they might be overlooked. So just putting on for everybody and just making a way for the city in a positive way. Like a guy that, some, that people could look up to and be like, I want to be like that. Speaking of Isaiah Williams, I'll have a longer story on his journey airing Sunday night on Sports Plus. We are also hitting the other big college programs as Frank Cusimano sits down with both new SLU basketball transfer Robbie Avila and Mizzou quarterback Brady Cook. That's Sunday night at 1030 on Sports Plus. This Five on Your Side St. Louis City SC coverage is sponsored by Together Credit Union. It is a week off from games for City SC, but news is still rolling in. Today, the club announced a new contract with midfielder Celio Pompeo. The new deal will take Pompeo through the 2026 season with the club with an option for 2027. Celio has been with this organization since the beginning and is a credit to how the club wants to develop young players. And it might take a year, it might take three months, it might take 18 months. But, you know, if we can see that curve going on with all different players, um, it's, it's really rewarding to, to show that the system is, is the winner. Oh, it just feels like reward, you know, like all the hard work that I put in on the field, off the field, the sacrifices, stay away from family. It's just, it's just nice to, to get rewarded in some way. Always cool to see those draft moments yeah. uh, for the families. And we had our first St. Louis draftee tonight, Dominic Pooney, Francis uh -huh. House Central. He's going to the 49ers. You love to see those moments. That's fantastic. Yeah. All right, thanks, Corey. Coming up, empty calendar. We've got you covered from Art Hill to Maryland Heights. Things to do in the Lou this weekend. Plenty of things to keep you busy in St. Louis this weekend. The Missouri History Museum is bringing back its newly reimagined 1904 World's Fair exhibit after nearly a year. It opens up to the public tomorrow, just in time for the 120th anniversary of the fair. Celebrating a decade of Ballpark Village, Cardinals fans can rock out to Brett Young live in concert, enjoy merch, giveaways, and games, then cheer on the team at the away game watch party on Sunday. And on Sunday, you can discover and celebrate the cultures that come together to make up St. Louis at World Fest. 
It's at St. Louis Music Park in Maryland Heights. There's going to be live music, dance performances, and cultural food from local vendors. Thanks so much for joining us at 10. The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon is next. Be sure to start your day tomorrow morning starting at 6 a.m. Have a great night.